you'll be shocked to discover that 80% of the higher manager for AI product management doesn't have the hands-on experience as a product manager. So how would you actually really create the Gen AI product and actually really create the product that people really love? In this video, we had the pleasure to invite the senior product manager of Gen AI, Hadika from Amazon, to share with you the hands-on experience of how to create the Gen AI product and how to become a Gen AI product manager. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and feature in Forbes. I've helped thousands of people land the dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we'll talk about free product management training and tech trends. Like and subscribe and check out new video every Tuesday. Hi, Hadiga. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Nancy. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm so excited to have you to join our show because I love to talk about the trend of Gen AI and also have several female leaders to join our show. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. And your podcast is amazing. Uh, I look forward to discussing more Gen AI trends. And I really hope that we can have more women in the senior leadership roles and in the PM roles in Gen AI. Yeah, exactly. So now, Hadika, let's do a quick intro. I know congratulations for your new role joining Amazon as a senior Gen AI uh, product manager. I also know that yourself have been in the AI space with hands-on experience building, developing AI product for, for over six <laughs> years in total. So now let's do this. Uh, Hadika, why don't you give us a quick introduction of yourself and see your journey to Gen AI PM? Of course. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. So hi, everyone. My name is Hardika. I am a senior product manager tech for Gen AI within the Fire Tablets team at Amazon. Um, I have about eight plus years of product management experience. Uh, most of that has been across the AI space uh, in early stage startups, including Involve AI, where I was the founding product manager and recently became the senior director of product. I have helped build the industry's first leading da AI generated dashboard which uses customer data to help prevent upcoming churn uh, and create predictions around it. We have helped save companies millions of dollars in predicted churn, and our own organization has grown 200% year over year through that increase. Um, I would say that uh, to become uh, proficient in AI, I think I was I was uh, fortunate enough to get the opportunity to get hands-on uh, learning experience within my organization and uh, transform that into a Gen AI uh, PM experience, which I'm very excited to start at Amazon. And Hadika, this is so exciting regarding you already had AI experience now join an even bigger company. And people will be thinking, people are like, it'll be easy to join those like fan companies, become Gen AI PM. Uh, is that true? No, <laughs> that's 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 not true. Uh, I would say that it, it might have been easier earlier, uh, perhaps. But I would say right now in this market, uh, things are so unpredictable and decisions are changing so fast. I think today, you know, hiring processes are changing so quickly mm -hmm. that I wouldn't say that, you know, getting into a fan company is as easy now as it was maybe three to four years ago. True. The reason being that the market is very different. I mean, forget about recession. That is obviously a huge factor, which a huge thing that plays a role in it. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, the requirements have changed. Most of the Tell companies are looking for someone who has that AI or the Gen AI experience per se. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, Gen AI, the entire process around it only started less than two years ago. Exactly. So back in November 2022 is when Chat GPT was released. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's what? It's May 2024. It's hardly been two years, but the entire landscape has changed. So PMs, especially, you know, in addition to that, engineers and data scientists too, have mm -hmm. been have been forced to upskill themselves really fast. So, you know, and either you survive here or, you know, or, or you don't thrive anymore because yeah. either you learn those skills or you're out of the market. Um, and that's exactly. the reason why uh, it's, I said that it's a little harder now. The second thing is uh, mm -hmm. that every company is looking for different skill sets. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you're interviewing with Microsoft, 
they are looking for something which is very different. Like they might want someone who has eight plus years of AI experience and then maybe a year or so of Gen AI experience. I see. Um, if you look at uh, Meta, they might want someone with four years of AI experience. Uh, it changes. Uh, the, the requirement changes from company mm-hmm. to company. But something that stays consistent is that Everyone now wants someone who has some level of Gen AI capability. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why it's it's very important for every PM to train themselves on this because even the resources out there are pretty limited. I'm not saying they're not there and we will talk about it in more details as we pro- as we progress. Mm-hmm. But you know, compared to all other PM resources, these are limited. So you need to be really smart about how you're using your time to upskill yourselves while you are doing your day-to-day work. Perfect. So Hadika, so now let's dive into the details regarding how exactly yourself conquer these challenges. So let's talk about the first challenge. Hadika, you mentioned the market is changing dramatically. What's the truth? Very funny. So I... I had a baby in December 2023 after three months of maternity leave. Thank you. Uh, after I had a baby, after I came back for three months, oh my goodness, it's like autopilot just launched, like it just was just launched. Gemini was launched. So many new things was launched. Like even with that, yeah. after short maternity leave, the whole world of AI is different. So how did you really conquer the challenges of the entire industry being shifted and changing yeah. all the time? That's uh, very good. And that's a very broad question. Um, I think the first thing is to stay up to date with Mm -hmm. all the changes that are happening. Um, So you you need to put yourself in that mindset that, hey, if I'm using this product today, if I were to incorporate AI into this, how would this change tomorrow? And then look at what all uh, updates are coming into the industry. So every other week, a new LLM is being released. Yeah. Uh, existing LLMs are getting improved. Um, and the resources that you could refer to to stay up to date for that would be uh, there's deeplearning.ai. They have short courses so that you could look at, you know, how to be a Gen AI PM. Uh, you could also understand how to use uh, maybe, you know, chat GP for app building, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But also those courses need to be updated too because a lot more LLMs have come to the picture today. The yeah. second thing would be, Dr. Nancy, you have launched your own course about uh, being an AI PM and how to get hands-on uh, knowledge through uh, hands-on products uh, and build your Gen AI experience there. So I would say that would be extremely helpful because as a Gen AI PM, if you've actually built apps before using LLMs, that already differentiates you from the others because that helps you understand the technicalities, the challenges, the implementations, and the use cases about how, when, and why to use those apps. Um, third right. thing, uh, you know, subscribe to newsletters like there's mm-hmm. the MIT Tech Review, there's yes. Alpha Signal, which talks about, you know, new LLMs, what are the parameters, how's the fine tuning improved, what is the inference cycle, etc. So Again, a PM does not need to understand this in as many, as much technical details. But if you have that knowledge, your conversation with engineers is so much better. And mm-hmm. that, again, is what helps differentiate you in this market. Um, so I would say the first challenge is to stay up to date. And we talk yeah. about the resources to do that. Mm-hmm. The second thing is that if you can build an app using any LLM out there, that yeah. would be helpful. Uh, especially right. if you don't have experience as a Gen AI or an AI PM. Building an app does not have to be very complicated. I mean, think about something that you do in your day-to-day. For example, you're applying to various jobs, right? And mm-hmm. you're using different portals. You're using LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor to see what are the new roles which are being posted, what are the titles of those roles, which companies are you filtering down on. So yeah. rather than doing that, that manually every morning, you could actually use existing LLMs out there to create an app. Uh, you know, simplest thing, use ChatGPT 4.0 to create that app. Mm -hmm. where it would tell you based on the filters you provide it with and the time duration that you give it exactly when a new job has been posted. It will also, the app could also help you uh, correlate your experience with the job description that they're looking for Mm -hmm. and, you know, filter your resume accordingly or modify your resume accordingly. And then you could apply to that role. 
So think about the number of hours that you're going to save on manually searching for something and yeah. just having it all automated for you. And automation is key today. This mm-hmm. is what all the LLMs are doing right now. And this is what you can do as well. That's why I said that you don't have to think of something that's, you know, a pie in the sky idea. Mm-hmm. You can think of something that's in your day to day and you could implement that. Yeah, the exactly. Method, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. And, and actually with M PM Accelerator, I'm having our student in the AI PM course to actually build a chatbot using our training content on YouTube and inside Kajabi so that they can create something like more filtered and tailored to their specific background and also ask questions regarding that that could be Dr. Nancy Lee, but it's not me, but based on my, my training data, they ask Dr. Nancy Lee, I'm having an interview with Apple tomorrow. What module should I focus on first? And based on my this background, that background, uh, what do you think is the number one thing I I should prepare so that I can pass the first one interview and meta, those kind of questions. They can literally start yeah. training, thinking about what day-to-day you're doing and about how to use AI to make everything more efficient. Exactly. And see how many, again, how many hours we've already saved here, Dr. Nancy, mm-hmm. for the students from searching and filtering and then waiting for a response to actually getting instant access to resources and answers and applying them for the interview the next day. So I I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, And the third thing that I also wanted to mention was real quick uh, is that every app that you're using on a day-to-day basis, Mm -hmm. just start getting into the mindset of how can you replace, not replace, but how can you incorporate AI into that app. Quick example, I use Uber Eats every week. Uh, I love to order in, right? We all do. Uh, You might be using Uber Eats, you might be using DoorDash. Exactly. Now, the one thing that I don't do and Uber Eats tries to promote to me is that, hey, why don't you try this new restaurant or why don't you try this new place? Mm -hmm. And I go like, I I don't want to try it. The reason being, I don't know how it is. I will have to do some research on how the place is, what are the timings, yeah. will my family like the food, etc. And I don't have the time to do that research. Mm-hmm. Now think about this. What if I just asked Uber Eats, hey, uh, today's a Friday evening. I'm, uh, you know, my whole family is here. We are in the mood for something very hearty, very delicious. Uh, but we want it within the next 30 minutes. What would you recommend? My preference would yeah. be Indian followed by Mediterranean followed by Chinese cuisine. Mm-hmm. And it gives me three to five options then and there. And that's it. That's okay. all I need to do. I get the answer. So this is AI right there. Oh, so much time of mine has been saved. So, you know, th- this was an example just to get your juices flowing mm-hmm. into what could you do to get yourself into that mindset before, you know, you get, uh, before you, even you become a Gen AI PM. This is awesome. Yeah, actually, all the product managers eventually will turn into an AI PM sometime in the future, but now we can just horn our those kind of like AI thinking onto our day-to-day basis, which is also inside of the PM Accelerator, the AI track, AI PM track, we actually teach people to gain those hands-on experience and building those apps by themselves. But thank you so much for sharing with us regarding you can get started today immediately. Um, so now, Hadika, what, what I want to uh, talk about the second challenge regarding each company has different needs, right? As you mentioned, mm-hmm. Apple has something different, Microsoft something different. As well, years of experience. Of course, they always want to describe the dream quote husband. It's like, oh, they can do this and this and this, this with five years AI experience, two years Gen AI experience. Ideally, you went to Harvard and then have a computer science degree from Stanford. So those kind of stuff. Well, each company is different. So, how would you really adjust to different companies' needs? I would say before you think about company needs, think about your needs. Think mm-hmm. about the needs of the role that yeah. you're applying to. So think about what your background is and based on your background, what's a good fit for you. And I think Dr. Nancy, that's where, again, your course becomes very helpful too, because you have very dedicated mentors, including yourself, who would help students identify that based on your resume and your past background, here are the roles that would work well for you. Then based off of those roles, identify the companies that you want to go in. I would also recommend don't stick to only fan companies. Mm -hmm. Broaden your horizon. Uh, Look at startups as well. And the reason I'm talking about startups is because, again, they're not going to have very fancy requirements. What they want is for someone to come in and get the job done. 
And yeah. that will also give you the opportunity to actually get hands-on experience on building something from the ground up. And mm-hmm. this is the experience that you can then use at your next company. Now, be it a fan company, be it another startup, wherever you want to go from there. So I would say don't just limit yourself because yeah. yes, fan companies are being uh, are being very picky, which obviously does not mean that you, you won't get there, you will. But if you want to especially brush up your resume, brush up your skills, then, you know, you, you might want to find uh, some place which gives you the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that would be number one. And what is true, would you see lots of people getting those AI jobs in fan companies, in our program, and also mm-hmm. people who had like, head of product positions in some startups or even senior AI PM positions in a different kind of unicorn startup as well. And right. now you never know. So AI, which is the beginning of the AI? Where the, the beginning of the AI era, you never know where AI is going. Maybe the startup mm-hmm. you join today will be the next Google in the coming three years, yeah. five years, maybe even sooner. We never know, right? So you're right. It's more important thinking about what do you need? What the job need to get done? Is this going to help you to grow or not? Maybe in the near term, you join startup. In the long term, join fan companies. And of course, like people can also follow Hadika's track, directly join fan com- companies starting from day one. You can do that as well. But it's more uh, open up your search and be strategic regarding defining your career success and career growth. Actually, I have a different video about uh, different product managers' career paths and how to design a career path. You guys can check out more videos right here. Link it in the description of this video as well. The the second thing that I was uh, referring to was that we, we talked about how you could get more hands-on experience within startups. Now, even within fan companies, look at roles which, uh, if you and this is if you don't have much of AI experience, look at roles which are asking for very limited experience, maybe mm. one or two years of AI experience. That would probably, or that hiring would probably be in a team which already has its AI processes set up. So right. you, when they hire you, you would actually be able to learn about what has already been done and help, you know, either iterate on it or maintain it, which is mm-hmm. also a great opportunity. So, you know, I mean, be ambitious, but be realistically ambitious, if that makes sense. So that, yeah. you know, you also find like, what is the right fit for you mm-hmm. in the process? Um, And the third thing is that whenever you are applying to any of these companies, be it fan companies, startups, et cetera, research their products. And again, think about how can you incorporate AI strategically in those products? What would the challenges be so that when you're talking to the hiring manager about that, they already know that you've you've started thinking about it. You've thought, started thinking about the problem statements and the use cases, mm-hmm. uh, and which will also help you not only understand the product better, but also understand uh, the fit better. Like, is this the right fit for you based on the role and based on the uh, problem and the solution that you're going through? Yeah, exactly. This is also, we typically recommend our students to use the Gucci framework methodology to create right. your maybe the shortcut version of your part portfolio. So before you join any company, what if I can build a part portfolio to show them what could be on their roadmap? What does it look like? And then use this methodology to really enhance your learning. And then when you go to interview, you already know what the future roadmap look like. And you have very intelligent conversation with the interviewer. Yeah. And I would love to talk about the Gucci framework more, Dr. Nancy. Mm-hmm. Um, every interview that I've been to, I've done two things. Number one is I have my product portfolio, which I take to the interview. And depending on, you know, what the role is and if, if this is a good fit and also looking at, uh, you know, what the attitude of the hiring manager is, I bring up my portfolio and we go over it. Mm-hmm. But the second thing is that using the Gucci framework, which is I think about what's the goal of the company, what is the customer segmentation, what are the unmet needs, who are the competitors, and then what are the recommendations that we can provide within an integrated ecosystem, and how can we create a roadmap around it. Mm-hmm. So I I think the reason that I think in that kind of framework is that by the time I actually get to the interview. I already have all the answers in my mind. Yeah. Uh, so the moment that they start discussing about their product or their uh, their unmet needs, I can actually 
add more to that and I can start providing some kind of high level solutions. Mm-hmm. Obviously, doing a hiring manager interview, you don't go into very detailed solutions. But again, they do appreciate the fact that you've thought about it and that yeah. you're coming up with ideas. This is awesome. Hey guys, we have a free training about Gucci framework, which is also one of the most used framework in the product management domain to create the product strategies. You can take the free training right here in the Gucci framework on top of the video. I'll also link it in the description of this video as well. Another quick plug-in, and actually in the next video we're going to film with Hadika, she's going to give you a real-life example how to put AI on Instagram roadmap using the Gucci framework. You guys should definitely subscribe to this video and check out my next video. All right, so now, uh, Hadika, let's continue regarding uh, finish those challenges. Let's also talk about your mindset shift. I personally is a big believer of mindset. When people work really hard, you also need to work really smart as well, because a lot of time we all heard of those phrases, but when people work really hard, they forgot the North Star. That's why they, they are not working smart enough. So that's why I like to emphasize on mindset shift, because the mindset shift can actually help you to spend the 20% of time on the 80% most important thing. So can you tell us what is your most important mindset shift that push you to the next level? Sure. I think a couple of things. Number one was that as I was working, as I was in my past company at Involve, uh, I'd been there for over six years. And for me, I decided that now this was the time that I need to get out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Because like I knew everyone within the company had great rapport. And again, you could either stick with that or you could decide to challenge yourself and continue to grow uh, across different industries and learn yeah. more about what's happening out there, which is what I wanted to do. So after six years, I made the decision that, okay, now is the time that I want to seriously start looking for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I was very consistent about was that I wanted to stay in the Gen AI space. I was coming from an AI background. I loved being an AI PM Mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure that I did not lose track of that. So I did not compromise on, on, on my next role. So that's why I decided to take some time and filtered the roles that I started applying to, to make sure that they matched what I, what I was looking for. Yeah. The third thing was also that, as I said uh, a few minutes ago, Mm -hmm. I did not stick to one kind of company. I broadened my horizons. Um, Mm -hmm. My goal was to see what are the companies which are using AI or are trying to now use AI in their strategies. So I interviewed with a lot of early stage startups, Mm -hmm. Series D companies, Series E companies, Series F companies. Um, And I had a... And what that gave me, even though it didn't give me an offer, what that gave me was Mm -hmm. great exposure into what other companies were doing. What were their challenges? What were their chief strategy officers and chief product officers thinking about? And just getting that insight from that high level uh, really helps you understand, like, what is it? What are the challenges that exist out there in the industry? Mm -hmm. And as a Gen AI PM, how will you help solve those challenges? So after every interview or after every rejection, I went back with the learning and I came back and actually researched on, you know, how, what could I have done better? How Mm -hmm. could I have incorporated a better strategy here? And then I would come back to your classes, Dr. Nancy, and discuss that with you that, you know, Hey, you know, this is the answer that I gave didn't work out. What could I have done better here? Mm -hmm. What would be a better strategy? How would I present it better? And I think that also helped me a much better, helped me get a much better idea on not only how to think, but Mm -hmm. also how to present. And I I think after maybe 30 or 40 rejections, that's when I got this role with Amazon. But please go ahead. Yeah, I I felt like this was a the gross mindset really kicked in because rejections is normal, right? So lots of people always feel, mm-hmm. oh, people get rich. I, I got rejected. What should I do? Well, lots of people getting rejected all the time because you only need one job offer. You only need the best job offer. And I believe if you didn't have those rejections or you didn't learn from those rejections, you want not going to land the best offer you can have right now. Like I know all your all your interview process, all your offers or rejections. Yeah. And I feel like this is the best offer on the table, right? For mm-hmm. all the companies yeah. you talk to, 100%. this is the best. Yeah. Yeah. The dream company, dream team with fan logo, highest paid ever, everything combined. I was like, this is the best. But every obstacles you faced 
is leading you to where it should be. So therefore, I encourage everybody to really think about how would you use a growth mindset methodology to empower you get into the next level. Of course, get some support from the communities and getting advice from other people and also other, other of your classmates also went through the same process, getting rejected. All the sharing process is very important. Thank you for so much for sharing, especially those your vulnerabilities because people will be thinking it'd be easy for you to learn a job, but you're just talking about you had objections as well. And I think people just feel like they're not alone on the journey. Thank you so much. No, no. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I was very overconfident going to this process. And this is exactly how I thought that because I have the experience, it will be easier for me to get the job. I think it took me easily nine months easy to not not in nine months. Actually, I've been in your course for a year. So it mm-hmm. took me a pretty long time to land the right fit. So I so again, you could either land an offer or you could land the right offer. Yeah. Uh, my goal was to land the right offer. Yeah, and that's the best why one. I took my time uh, to f- to figure out which was the right fit for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do believe the currently is the best one based on my insider knowledge regarding what's going on with Amazon. That's literally the best offer on the table and all the experience, uh, all the companies to talk to as well. Perfect. So Hadika, let's do this. Um, given you yourself talked about you had years of AI experience, so now you become Gen AI PM, but Gen AI is also kind of new. So what's the difference mm-hmm. between Gen AI and traditional AI PM? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say as a traditional AI PM, you have to think about and build everything from the ground up, which means not only getting the right data, but also building the right models. And when you are building, like within our company, we had multiple models for multiple customers, depending on the size of the customer, the industry they were coming from and their Mm -hmm. use cases. Now, and it took us a long time to build those models. It took us almost two to three years to actually get those models up and going before we could launch it to our customers. Now, so as an AI PM, my role was to understand what were the needs of these customers what were the gaps in data? What is the right data set that we needed to get? How do we manually fine tune all of that data? Then how do we create a model from the ground up working with our data scientists and ML engineers? Uh, then we feed all our data into those models. Then how do we test it, build that iterative process and then and then launch it to customers? Mm-hmm. Now, as a Gen AI PM, uh, the good thing is that I will already have, or you will already have access to all the foundational models out there. Yeah. Every company uh, or most of the companies, especially the bigger companies will have their own foundation models. Mm -hmm. So Amazon will be using its own, Amazon has Amazon Bedrock, uh, Meta has Llama, Microsoft has OpenAI, ChatGPT. So these companies already have their own foundation models Mm -hmm. based off of which you can then, depending on your use case and your data, you can build a quick model to uh, to implement across customers. Mm-hmm. So in this case, you don't have to go through the entire process of doing the ground up research and build separate individual models with different types of data. All of that time will be saved because you already have foundation models existing nice. for you. Um and for startups, uh, and when I say startups, I'm talking about every company out there which does not have a foundation model. Maybe it's a startup or it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be using other companies' uh, foundation models. They might be using ChatGPT's model, or they might be using Llama or Bedrock or Azure, uh, for example. Mm-hmm. So they might be using other models. But the thing is that now they don't have to wait for two years to launch it to customers. True. Literally in two months or maybe six, three to six months, you have your model up and going and your customers can start using it. That is the difference. So mm-hmm. uh, as a traditional AI PM, uh, in a nutshell, you're doing everything from the ground up, all the research and all the development. But as a Gen AI PM, you are identifying which models to use, what data to use, and then you decide what to build on top of that. This is awesome. This actually speed up the process mm-hmm. of bringing AI to the real life applications. You know, I literally, we have seen lots of AI startups just like as a sprouts getting out of the ground and launching their own product yeah. very fast. And lots yeah. of companies actually pivot into those like AI company just because the existing foundation model. This is mm-hmm. very groundbreaking. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. 
So uh, thank you so much for sharing with us, Hadika. And actually the most important for, for everybody to learn is how exactly would you put AI on real companies roadmap and what hands-on experience will look like. So actually in our next video, Hadika is going to give us a demo regarding how to put AI on Instagram's roadmap. How would she think about AI is going to change the future of Instagram and how to implement those AI technology. It's super, super exciting. So make sure to see us in our next video right here. And thank you so much for joining us, Hadika. And everybody, if you find this video super insightful and really want to get into AI space, make sure to like and comment and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to see you in my next video right here. Thank you, Hadika. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Nancy.